What's up everyone, welcome back to a brand new video. On the last part, we saw the conclusion to the war between Namek and the Frieza Force. Although it was a victory overall, there still was some loss. Most importantly, Nail. Kakarot was able to become a Super Saiyan and defeat Frieza in King Cold. But Nail's death was the catalyst that caused this. Plus, Slug went off on his own, and no one knows what he's up to. We'll be touching upon all this in this part. For this video, let's add a like over 3500 likes. Once we hit that, I'll continue with another part of the series. Anyways, let's pick it from here. Kakarot departs Namek, heading towards Earth. He knows there's Dragon Balls there, and he could rely on the help of the humans in common. He also has always wanted to see this planet. It would be nice to visit regardless, he hasn't really left Namek at all. Getting a better view of the universe would be pretty nice. A great change of pace from his current life. He's not too concerned, but while he's gone, he just hopes whatever Slug is up to doesn't affect Namek. He doesn't know what Slug is planning or when he plans to even come back, if at all. But as long as nothing happens while he's gone on Earth, He'll be able to deal with this once he's back. After some time traveling, he ends up on Earth. It looks so much different than Namek, way different than he expected. There's giant cities, a bunch of civilizations, and the sky, it's not green, it's blue. These things are pretty simple, but it's the first planet Kakarot's been to, outside of planet Vegeta and Namek, so he's gonna be pretty amazed seeing this. All right, but what does he do now? He needs to find Kami somehow. And that shouldn't be too hard, right? Like, he's a Namekian amongst a bunch of humans. He's gonna be the only green guy there. But the issue is, this planet is huge, there's so many people here, and even so, he doesn't know where to even start looking. He tries to sense everyone's energy. Even if he can't find Kami right now, maybe he'll find one of the humans from before. And he does get a slight pinpoint on one of the energies. That human named Krillin, he found him. Kakarot flies over, having no better idea of what to do. He ends up on a secluded island in the middle of the ocean. All that's there is a house, an old man, his turtle, and of course, Krillin. Roshi's confused and a little bit startled to see this guy here. But Krillin says it's okay. Kakarot introduces himself and learns Roshi's name too. Krillin is just as surprised though, he didn't expect Kakarot to be here. Why did he come all this way from Namek? Well, there's been a bit of an issue. He tells Krillin everything that's gone on so far. The war with Frieza, the fact that Guru died, the fact that Nail died, and the fact that they don't have Dragon Balls for a bit of time. But really, he did want to come to Earth just to get away from Namek for a while. Also for a little bit of training here. He was looking for Kami but didn't know where to start looking. And Krillin tells him he came to the right place. He leads Kakarot to Kami's lookout, and they go up to the top. That's why he couldn't find him. He's in a completely different realm from everyone else. Which makes sense, he is a guardian after all. But this is way different from what he saw with Guru. He greets Kami, who's glad to see Kakarot here. He asks how things have been on Namek. And they could have been better, but hey, they did make it out fine. Kami is also filled in on everything too. And he doesn't mind helping at all. The issue is, the Dragon Balls aren't in specific places like they are in Namek. They're just randomly scattered about Earth. He can't really do too much in terms of getting them instantly, but he can at least help Kakarot find the Dragon Balls. They use Purunga after all. Kami doesn't mind Kakarot using Earth's Dragon Balls too. But Kakarot also asks what's been happening here on Earth. Well, ever since they stopped King Piccolo, things have been pretty good. They've been rebuilding. Of course, King Piccolo did cause a lot of damage. But with Shenron, they were able to bring people on Earth back. And there's been a bunch of people training here to prevent this from happening again. Just in case there's another threat like this, they need to be as strong and as prepared as possible. But things have been fine. But Kami's confused as to why Kakarot wants to train here. He's clearly in a different realm of power from everyone here. But Kakarot says it's not strength that he's looking for. He was hoping maybe he could find some more types of knowledge here on Earth. Maybe Kami has a special technique. Maybe someone else can teach him something. He wants to make his trip as worthwhile as possible. Besides just reviving Nail. Everyone goes to search for the Dragon Balls, and it doesn't really take too long, especially with Kakarot there who's incredibly fast. Once the locations of them are pinpointed, they're all gathered together, and they summon Shenron. Kami also mentioned something pretty interesting. Ever since their encounter with King Piccolo, he also did upgrade the Dragon Balls as well. They're pretty much the same as they were before, but Shenron can grant three wishes now, just like Purunga. But he still has some limitations. Thankfully, a wish to revive Nail shouldn't take too much energy from him. That's a pretty tame wish. So, Kakarot asks Shenron to revive Nail. And he does so with ease. He's surprised. He expected this to be a lot tougher. But he was able to make it to Earth without encountering any trouble, and he got Shenron's wish. And Kami tells Kakarot. He hates to be kind of a downer, but there's not really much he could teach Kakarot. He seems to already have so much in terms of abilities. Especially since he's been training around Namekians anyways, it's not like Kami has anything special. Well, he does have one technique that he could teach Kakarot, the Mafuba. In case he ever encounters anyone like Frieza in the future, there is this technique. If a battle gets too tough for him to fight, and raw strength isn't going to cut it, he can break out this technique. It'll seal any evil person, and as long as that seal isn't broken, they'll remain there for good. Yeah, he's never learned anything like that, and he's pretty intrigued by this, so he trains with Kami for a bit to get this technique. He considers all of this a gift to Namek for saving Earth before. Letting Kakarot take one of Shenron's wishes and teaching him this technique is nothing. Because, you know, without Namek, well, Earth wouldn't really be in a great spot right now. Amidst their training, though, 
Kakarot senses an energy nearby. Two energies, actually. They're approaching Earth. Oh, great. Krillin's concerned, and Ten eventually arrives on the lookout, too. They all sense these evil energies, not knowing what's happening, but Kakarot tells them not to worry. He knows exactly who this is, and he'll just make this quick. They fly over to where the ships land, and off the ship step Vegeta and Nappa. They're cocky and confident at first, at least until they see Kakarot standing there waiting for them. Immediately, they have a bunch of questions. They're surprised to not see Gratis with Kakarot, and Kakarot is just as surprised, too. He has no idea where his brother is. He thought he might have found the other Saiyans or something, but it seems he's gone off on his own, like he said. And they press Kakarot. Why is he here? Did he know they were going to arrive here soon or something? Kakarot says no. It was just pure coincidence. But he asks them the same. Why are they here? Well, for the Dragon Balls, of course. This does come as a shock to Kakarot. He's surprised that they actually found out that this place has Dragon Balls, but it's still not a big deal. He tells him he just used them for a wish. Even though Shenron does have two more wishes, this will be a good lie. He doesn't say what the wish is, and Vegeta and Nappa begin questioning him. Did he use it to make some wish to help him against Frieza? Did he finally see what they were talking about? Well, no, he doesn't need a wish to help him against Frieza. Frieza was already killed. This is just restoring the damage that he did. Wait, did they hear him right? Frieza was killed by... by who? Kakarot just casually says it was him who did. There's no way. Kakarot's just a random low-class Saiyan. And yeah, he might be a bit strong, and he has his Namekian techniques, but he's still nothing for Frieza. If they can't defeat Frieza, how is he supposed to? Well, Kakarot says that there's one thing they're forgetting. But he doesn't blame them. They haven't seen this, and they probably don't even know what this is. They think he's bluffing too. So, he shows off that he's not lying by turning Super Saiyan. This catches everyone off guard. The humans and Kami too. They've never sensed a power like this. They knew Kakarot got much stronger from before, but they didn't know he was this much stronger, and that he had a transformation on top of that. And obviously Vegeta and Nappa are speechless. They can't believe what they're seeing. It's actually a Super Saiyan. Not only does it exist, but it exists within Kakarot, a random low-class warrior that isn't even with Saiyans right now. He's pretty much the antithesis to Saiyans at the moment, and he somehow became a Super Saiyan. Kakarot detransforms, telling them to consider this a warning. Don't come to Earth causing trouble, or Namek for that matter, too. With Kakarot at its current power right now, they're not going to be able to defeat him at all. And as much as they hate to admit it, he's right. They have nothing to do right now. They believe what Kakarot said about the Dragon Balls, thinking that there's no way they could actually get a wish here. And even if the Dragon Balls were here, well, Kakarot's too strong for them to fight. They couldn't do anything against him. If they try, they're just going to die easily. They came all this way and did all that research for nothing. And while they'd love to fight right now, they can't. Angrily, they depart. And Krillin asks why he's letting them go. He tells Krillin not to worry. He's fought those two before and beat them already. He could beat them again, and if they try to cause more trouble, he doesn't even care. They're not anywhere near his level at the moment. Even if they somehow become Super Saiyans, he'll still be above them. Besides, he's already seen another Saiyan change, his brother. The one that he mentioned before when he was catching everyone up. Who knows? All they wanted after all was Frieza to be dead. And Kakarot accomplished that goal. Yeah, they were angry, but not too angry. Maybe they'll be off doing something else. Maybe they'll stop being the genocidal Saiyan warriors that they are. What else do they have to do at the moment? Alright, now that that's done, Kakarot can finally leave, going back to Namek. He does wonder what Vegeta and Nappa are going to be up to though, but he doesn't really care too much. He knows he'll probably see them eventually anyways. And just as he's boarding his ship, of course there's another interruption. Ten asks everyone if they feel something too. They don't feel any energies, but they feel a rumbling. And it's not like an earthquake or something. They feel the presence of humans being destroyed. As if there's chaos going on somewhere, a bunch of people are dying at once. Wait, what? Is this Vegeta and Nappa? They immediately rush over, and they see something that they didn't really expect. Not even the humans know what this is at first. It's not the Saiyans. They can't even sense who it is. It's just two humans there. Somehow, they're destroying stuff with ease. But there's no key to be sensed. Kakarot's confused. Why can't they feel their energy? The humans have no answer either. They have no idea what's going on right now. But then Ten notices something far away. One of those fighters. On his shirt, he has an emblem on there. It's not possible, but... The Red Ribbon Army logo's on his shirt. They can't be Red Ribbon Army soldiers, can they? They were defeated so long ago. The two fighters notice the humans and Kakarot, flying over to where they are. This is exactly what they wanted. They have the objectives to kill Krillin, Roshi, and Tenshinha. But they don't know who this other guy is. They don't have any data on him whatsoever. They introduce themselves, Android 17 and 18. Krillin tries to attack them, but it does nothing. Punches and kicks do no damage, and even Key Blasts don't either. Ten tries the same thing. Nothing's working. Unless they attack with their full power, they can't even injure them. And even then, the injury isn't even much. But there's something different to know about 17 and 18 here. Thankfully, without Goku or even Kakarot, they're much weaker since they're only based on Jiro's research of the humans and King Piccolo. Their power isn't adjusted to surpass someone like Kakarot or even the Saiyans. Jiro's only data and research is based off of people that were already on Earth. So he missed out on a lot of interesting stuff. 
These androids, they're a lot stronger than the humans here. Even if they get stronger and all grouped together, there's no way the androids are going to be defeated by the humans. But Jiro didn't account for Kakarot. It's not his fault though, he couldn't have known. And the androids are just as confused too. This guy, he is a human, right? How do they not know about him? Why is he hanging out with these other strong fighters? Kakarot says that's where they got it wrong. He has no idea who they are, and still is confused as to why they're even here, but he says he's not scared of them. Seventeen goes over to attack Kakarot. Kakarot blocks the attack. He could definitely feel it. These two are strong, but he's in base right now, and he was wide open for that attack. He's a bit injured by it, but he's still not too worried. Seventeen laughs. There's no point in being so cocky if you can't support that. Look at that. He couldn't even brush off Seventeen's attack. He clearly was injured by it. But Kakarot keeps his same nonchalant demeanor. Those two are pretty strong, but there's a few things that they're missing. One, they don't know who he is. Two, they don't know his true power. And three, they're mechanical. Their mechanical power as of now has some limits. Kakarot doesn't have the same limits. They have no clue what he means. He's just babbling nonsense. 18 gets ready to attack, saying she'll make this quick, and letting 17 take the humans. And Kakarot simply transforms into Super Saiyan. Of course, they can't sense his energy, but they can feel the presence of him. The gust of wind, the heat and force of the aura, they feel all of them. On top of the fact that Kakarot has physically changed. What is this? A transformation? This guy definitely isn't human, and a fight ensues. He tells the humans to watch out. These two are way too strong for them, as much as he hates to admit it. No offense. But he'll handle them as a gift. Kakarot launches up into the air, coaxing the androids to follow him. He just needs to get the humans away from them. The androids fly up together, trying to attack Kakarot both at once. They're able to get some hits in, and even some blasts too, but as they attack more and more, they see Kakarot's not taking any damage. Okay, well, he might be strong, but they still have infinite energy. That could help them. They just gotta use their full power and launch everything they've got at him. They power up fully, charging the largest key blasts that they can, launching them rapid fire at Kakarot. Each android goes on a separate side, with Kakarot in the middle as they barrage him with key blasts. A bunch of explosions occur. Ten and Krillin watch from the ground below. What is he doing up there? He's just taking those attacks. There's no way he's gonna survive it. 17 and 18 keep angrily launching the blasts, but they then feel a powerful gust of wind. Everything's knocked back, and all their blasts are dissipated. Kakarot chuckles a bit. He was expecting a bit more from them, but now it's his turn. Casually, with one blast in each hand, he launches an attack at each of them. And just like that, the fight is over. Well, not completely. Kakarot tells them they need to find whoever created these androids. Once they defeat him, they'll truly be safe. But if he had to send the androids out to do his bidding, this guy might not be too strong to begin with. But still, be careful. Find that Red Ribbon Army guy that created these androids and stop him. They thank Kakarot for his help. He tells him not to mention it. It was nice coming here too. He got what he wanted and got a good experience. But now it's time for him to head home. He thanks everyone again, saying his goodbyes and boarding his ship, going back to his home planet. He's pretty excited too. Things should be okay over there. Nail's gonna be back, and Mori's gonna be the new Grand Elder. But he still can't help but feeling a little bit of a sense of dread. There's so much unknown out there. He doesn't know what Vegeta and Nappa are up to, and while he's not too worried about Raditz, there still is a bit of concern about him. Kakarot doesn't know what he's up to. Mostly it's worry though. He doesn't think Raditz is going to pull anything, he's just worried that his brother will get into some trouble. But there's also Slug. While he was gone, he didn't know what's been going on in Nam, and this gets him worried. Slug was definitely planning something. Maybe he's going to come back and attack them. Kakarot eventually arrives back on Nam, and the first thing he does is go to Nail. He's glad to see him again, but Nail's wondering why Kakarot's so paranoid. And Kakarot says he doesn't know. Slug's up to something, and it definitely can't be good, but it seems like they're fine. He hasn't returned, at least not yet, and hopefully it stays that way. Hopefully they can prepare for whatever's coming up to them. Meanwhile, Slug is still out in space. If he can't take over Nambic and form an army there, that's fine. He can do that somewhere else, and he'll grow stronger while he's at it. He thinks back to what he saw in the battle against Frieza. All those Namekians were strong, but they weren't as strong as him, besides Nail. But even with Nail there, that still doesn't matter. Slug thinks he could surpass everyone. He's a prodigy after all. He's gotten so strong so quickly. And there's one thing that's been on his mind too. Kakarot became a Super Saiyan, and he's heard legends of something else similar to that. A Super Namekian. He doesn't exactly know what it is, but he knows it's going to give him some great power. And just as Kakarot found out what a Super Saiyan was, Slug wants to find out what a Super Namekian is. But it's not just that that's changed about him. He's even taken on a new alias too. From now on, he's no longer going to be known as Slug. He needs a more fitting title. Lord Slug. Much better. And with that, we'll leave off here for now. So, what did you guys think of this part? And what do you think is going to happen next time? Leave any thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like. And let's try to hit that like goal from the beginning of the video so we can get another part of the series. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? As well as hitting the bell icon to be notified about any future parts of this what if, or any other videos that I upload on my channel. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.